As um, most of you know, additively manufactured metal parts have a very rough initial surface, um, which consists mainly out of a waviness from the solidified melt and from partially molten particles, which you can also see here in the SEM picture down here at the left. Um, as some of you might know that this very high initial surface roughness um, can reduce the fatigue strength of AM metal parts. And why is this important? Um, we and especially our design team try to uh, get the best out of uh, additive manufacturing via redesigning your parts, via using tools like topology optimization, which aims at um, getting rid of excess material, making um, struts thinner, making parts lighter, reducing the costs. And this can lead to some uh, positive business cases for this still pretty expensive technology. Um, and this works really well for statically loaded parts. But if you have um, 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 parts that aren't statically loaded, that are dynamically loaded, um, the fatigue strength, which I mentioned, the low fatigue strength of um, additively manufactured metal parts comes in. And so there we have to, to counter this. And countering, we have to, to add more material, make the part heavy again. And sometimes this can destroy the business case again for uh, fatigue loaded or, or dynamically loaded parts. So what helps? Post-processing. As most of you probably know, post-processing of these AM parts um, can increase the fatigue strength. Also here, you see this in the, in the graph over here, the fatigue strength milled is way higher than the S build. And our state of the art is machining, so milling, turning, also grinding, polishing, or blasting. But for most parts that are, for example, topology optimized, um, these are hard or sometimes even impossible to machine due to the lack of accessibility in these parts. This is the reason why um, a variety of researchers uh, are investigating different processes around the world um, to smooth metal, metal AM parts. And under these um, post-processing methods, you find abrasive processes, chemical processes or uh, electrochemical process, for example. And also Airbus um, and Airbus Central Research and Technology um, developed and patented their own polishing process, which is called 3D surfing. And this process is uh, designed to um, smoothen additively manufactured titanium 6-4 parts. This process is a plasma electrolytic polishing process. I will uh, explain to you what this means. Um, as in classic electrolytic polishing, our workpiece here is the anode of a galvanic um, cell. And when we put the part into the, into the electrolyte, this circuit closes and due to the high voltages that we apply in this plasma electrolytic polishing, uh, plasma forms on the outside of, the, of your part and smooths the surface as represented here. And the working principle is uh, partially anodic dissolution, which is also kind of what is the, the basis of electro um, polishing. And as I mentioned, this plasma. And this plasma is important because it's uh, highly sensitive to the roughness peaks. So the roughness peaks get dissolved before the rest of the, our roughness profile, so to say. Um, and let's look at the schematic here on the right. So how does this work? Um, first of all, in, a, in, a, in the timeline, we basically reduce the, the, the peaks and the, the the very rough peaks here on the, these, and these get rounded. And by the time we take more and more material away, the, the wire polishing and the surface gets, let's say, wavy, 
And in the end, where we want to go is this polished state. So where we remove all the notches in the material and have a really smooth surface. And um, this is especially important for titanium 6.4 because it's very, very um, notch sensitive. And therefore we always want to reach to, to have a good fatigue performance this state on here. Also, if you see, there's uh, some kind of threshold. So you have to apply it for a certain time, a minimum time elsewhere. If you only apply it here and have some notches left, the fatigue strength will only increase a little. So you have to get in a certain range to get these really high fatigue strengths where you can see it's around 900 megapascal on titanium 6.4. Yes, this is so, so much for the, the, the method. And what equipment do we use? Here you can see our equipment and, uh, at AppWorks in Taufkirchen. Um, here on the left, basically it consists of a um, rectifier, electric rectifier. Here on the left, we have um, a rinsing bath in there. And here on the right is our main bath, our 3D surfing electrolyte bath. This vessel covers 200 liters. And you can see here on the picture that it um, can take in fairly large uh, parts. To where are we with this technology? So this technology is technically uh, validated. So we have a big um, scale lab uh, equipment and Airbus is currently qualifying the 3D surfing as a surface treatment for AM Ti-6 four parts. But what's the result? I think that's uh, your, on your main interest. Uh, remember, in we go with the AM surface with a high initial surface roughness, partially molten particles, as you see here, high notch factor and low fatigue performance. And um, out of the process, I mean, look at the picture. A picture says more than a thousand words. Um, we come with this smooth surface. We don't have any adherent particles anymore. We have a low notch factor and a high fatigue performance. And um, let me point out, this is a, a one-step process. So there, we don't have to apply sandblasting or blasting or anything before this. We can put the initial rough as built surface in and we will, um, if we apply um, the process long enough, we will always land on this quite smooth um, surface. You will see that I, put a range here on these roughness um, values because um, as most of you might know, this initial roughness depends on what are your laser parameters, what is your powder, what is the layer thickness and so on. So these can have a huge variety of values. And this also means that we have to adapt our process. And adaption here just means we have to perhaps um, perform the, the process longer on, on, on your part. So if you have a higher roughness, we have to treat it longer in the bath to, to reach the um, required roughness. And what also comes into mind here is if we remove material from the surface, this material removal has to be considered in the initial design of AM parts. So in, in general, we have to apply an offset to get the right specs and the right measurements after the, the polishing. So think about the offset. Um, so when we think about the applicability of this, this process, what can we apply this to? And of course, there are some limitations to this process. When you look here on the, the bottom right, here we have a crosscut of a benchmark specimen we, we designed and polished. And here you will see that the, the 3D process surface couldn't reach into these tiny holes or, or, or drillings. You, it partially um, penetrated until here. You can see this on the, the SEM picture really nicely. This is well polished and the inside isn't polished. And this is due to yeah, kind of a Faraday shielding effect. So this means that the electric field, electric field just can't uh, penetrate into these small holes and drillings. Um, but this is quite common for, for every uh, electrochemical process. And what is also quite common for electrochemical processes 
is that um, due to the, the higher electrical fields on sharp edges, these edges will get rounded a little bit. So you see, we have some limitations for this process. And this is why I always say, we need to have a look at your part. Is your uh, is 3D surfing able to process your part? Is your part the right part for, for uh, 3D surfing? And there, I would always say, we need to do some kind of part screening on your parts. But uh, let's look what um, our process is perfect for parts that don't have sharp edges. So few sharp edges, fillets and smooth transitions. And these are all features that you can find in, in, in these kind of bionic structures. And um, also what I mentioned before in these topology optimized structures, these are all naive and have smooth transitions. And the, the process re works really, really well on these. As an example for this, I uh, can show you here the, the polished FCRC bracket from, from Airbus. And another example, which is great, is the ISS connector bracket from Ariane Group. Ariane Group um, did qualify the process for this part. And the nice thing is this, this bracket is flying uh, into space in a, in a Ariane 5 launcher. And um, the requirement for this part was to make um, NDT um, possible, so dye penetrant inspection possible. And uh, this was achieved with this technology. And talking about requirements, um, with 3D surfing, we hope we can um, make, achieve the requirements that you have for your parts. And um, these can be, uh, these can be a, a variety of requirements. So as I mentioned, to improve the fatigue performance, obviously, um, you want a functional surface where, um, you want to get rid of rough initial surface that hinders gas or liquid flow. Sometimes you may just want to have your, your part look better. Um, then also what is uh, important that you want a homogeneous surface. So for example, down skin and up skin. With this process, if you apply it um, sufficiently long enough, you will have the same properties on the down and the up skins. Then dimensional tolerance improves the accuracy of your parts. Um, as mentioned before, the testability as in the, the connector bracket from Ariane to make this liquid penetrant testing possible because this is impossible on the as-built surfaces. And at least, for example, paintability, you know, coatings and paint will only stick on, on, on homogeneous smooth surfaces. Yeah, these are the, the advantages of our process and um, yeah. I hope I could give you a, a good insight into this uh, new and this uh, exciting technology.